Hello again, um, today we will be going over how to set up the H100 Plus PID macro. So there's a couple ways to get to this. <clears throat> when you first re receive your inverter, you will be prompted with a screen asking you to do an easy setup. From that screen you can simply say yes and you can enter into the macro select. However, I want to make this video for the general audience and allow you to enter into that macro at any time. So the way to do that is we're going to press mode. We're going to press mode again until we see CNF. And we're going to go to Mac, uh, CNF 43, which is going to be our macro select. In this case, we will be using pressure control so let me reset this drive let's put this back to basic let's go to cnf 40 to initialize all parameters and let's again go here to cnf 43 and let's choose pressure control so now we can press the mode button and we're going to see a new group called mc1 here, we're going to be able to change essentially all the parameters required to set up PID. First thing will be acceleration time. Let's reduce this for demonstration purposes down to two seconds. Next, we have decel time. I'm going to kind of skip through the ones that are, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, <clears throat> Next, we have command source. This is where our run command is coming from. In our case, it will be keypad. This is the frequency source. Hand select key, hand command frequency, hand reference. Uh, we will be using the auto feature, so we will not be worrying about that. Next, we have our stop mode, coast to stop. I recommend having it set to coast to stop. Um, that's just easier on the pump. Next, we have motor capacity in horsepower. Our motor is at two horsepower, so we do not need to change this one. This is gonna be the hertz selection for the motor. That's okay with us. Next, we have our pull number. Again, for the motor, in our case, this is gonna be a two pull motor, so we will set it at two. And if that was too fast, uh, you enter into the uh, parameter by pressing program enter you switch around with these uh, with these arrow keys and then you press enter again to confirm these are some additional motor parameters next we have the rated current at 6.4 that is correct another term for this is full load amps next we have motor voltage at 230 volts again that is correct this is the incoming voltage to the motor Next, we have a few other parameters that we can set for the for the drive. So this is essentially saying do not run in reverse. This is saying the fan to uh, run when the drive is running. You can also set this to always on or temperature control. For this case. Uh, we'll just keep it during run. <clears throat> now PID select. Now we're entering into the PID functionalities. So, yes, of course we want PID. Where is our reference coming from? As mentioned earlier, we're going to be getting that from keypad. <clears throat> what do we want our set point to be? In this case, we'll set our set point to 6 PSI. What do we want our PID feedback source to be? In our case, we have a 4 to 20 milliamp signal coming into the drive, so we will keep this at I2. If you have a 0 to 10 signal, you would want to switch this to V1. Next, we have a couple of PID loop configurations that you can insert. These are not uh, 
generally changed, um, but if you want to fine tune your PID loop, here's where you would do it. At MC23, we have the inverting option for your PID loop. So essentially, if you need the PID to work in reverse, this is where you would do that. You would simply click yes here. Here is the unit selections. We have a plethora of units to choose from. So whatever you need, most likely it will be here. I'll skim through this real quick. As you can see, we have a plethora of options. 41 to be exact. Now we have our unit scaling. We're going to keep this at 10. Uh, at 26, we have the PID unit. This is the maximum value of your transducer. In our case, we have a 100 PSI transducer. Keeps it simple for us. We'll keep this at 100. Pump mint speed. This is an important parameter that I recommend keeping on. Excuse me. This is when the, the drive begins uh, ramping up the pressure. And this is an important parameter to set because it ensures that you do not burn out your pump. So I do recommend setting this at a, at a bit of a high value, but for now we're going to put this to 10 because we're uh, just using a, a small demo here. And by the way, 30 is 30 hertz for this uh, pump minimum speed is generally what people aim for. Next, let's do a wake up level type. Uh, this is I recommend keeping this on deviation. What this will allow for is uh, if you do plan to use a sleep function, this is going to give you a range to choose a range for the drive to wake up from instead of just putting a definite um, answer as to when you need the drive to wake up it gives it a nice little range <clears throat> sleep level type output frequency is what we will be using here um, essentially we'll be referring to the output frequency to determine when the drive needs to sleep <clears throat> Next, we have a PID sleep delay time. This is how long the, dr the drive is allowed to stay within the, that uh, frequency that we mentioned earlier before going to sleep. I'm actually going to increase this to allow our drive to speed up to, uh, to the frequency that we need it to. And here's our PID sleep level. Anything under this level for the this specific period of time. So again, anything under 30 hertz for this example, for 15 seconds, will tell the drive to go to sleep. Here's our wake up delay time. Generally, you don't want this to be too long. Um, if you, if the parameters are reached, if the if the proper parameters are reached in order for your drive to wake up, you don't want it to be in that state for too long. So let's keep this at two seconds. Next we have PID wake up level. This is that deviation that we spoke about earlier. So we'll put this at about three PSI. Again, this is because we are using a small demo. Um, however, I do recommend putting this a bit higher, maybe upwards of 10 or 15 PSI. So for our case, uh, we have the set point set to 6 PSI, um, therefore the range will be from 3 uh, to 6 PSI, your wake up level will be at 3 PSI. Next we have thrust frequency, and all the features after here are essentially additive. Uh, these are not required in any sort to set up PID, and more so, um, these sleep features are also not required to set up PID. So if you do not need your drive to go to sleep, uh, you can you can void these. So 
we should be ready to go now. Let's exit back. This is our set point. This is our current pressure. Let's get this going. Auto twice. So top right, we can see our frequency. So now we are above our sleep frequency. The driver will not go to sleep. And there it is, kind of stationing out around that 36 hertz area as it realizes that it's getting close to the set point. And it's maintaining 6 psi pretty well. If we open up the pipe, we will release pressure. As you see, we have an instant rise in speed. One more so. As we close this back up, we will see the frequency immediately going back down to adjust for that. So there you go, excellent. And if you would like to see the sleep feature in action, it seems like we are finding an equilibrium around that 38 hertz. So if I go ahead and set my sleep to let's say 39 hertz, Let's go ahead and set this to 4 hertz. So within 15 seconds, drive should go to sleep. Excellent. Now if we relieve some pressure, Remember we said if it if it's under that 3 psi range so it went to 0 which is further than 3 this is going to um, wake back up so exactly as expected so we'll wake it back up 1 2 3 we'll close this up And now it will it will continue going to sleep because it's going it's not going to reach above that 40 hertz. So, let me see. Perfect. All right. Thank you for watching.